Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Lockout man, right here again. Coming up with something different, you know, something smooth. Y'all, y'all like that in the background, right? All right, I am back, of course, again with another Lockout Men podcast interview for you guys today. Today we have a young lady that works in the ports, right? You, you work in the ports, right? Is it the no. ports? Uh, no. Yeah. no, no, it's not the ports. Yeah, the ports, no, no, right? Not the ports. No, not the ports. No. All right, so Mm-mm. not not the ports. Mm-mm. Okay. What? I mean, I have taken trucks to the port, but that's very rare. Oh, okay, okay. So what? Did, what? Did, you you sent me a picture of what you actually pulled. Though. Right? Yeah, truck. Yeah. You, we you, we call them deck sets because mm-hmm. basically the trucks are decked. They're on top of each other, so they're okay. decked like domino. Okay, so you like a? It's like you're not a hot shot driver, but. You you go no. you you go pick up you you just you just pull the trucks like brand new trucks to the dealerships and stuff like that. Basically, yeah, and I also have to pull them apart. Oh. I pick them up, put together, but I have to actually take them down once I get them, you know, to where they're going. Now you know what I seen. You know I seen I seen a lot of trucks like that, and I always wonder. How the hell you guys get them up and take them down? I always you wondered know, that. I've, I've had people actually walk up. Because, like, if I'm at a fuel stop, I've had people actually walk up and, like, take pictures. or And sometimes I get a little nervous because they'll get a little bit too close. And I'm like, you know, I don't want you to pull on something or right. tug on something trying to see what this is. And you mess up my damn load. But, um, yeah, I, I've had. I've had a lot of curious people looking, and, and they'll ask. And I'm like, you know, it's a process. I'm like, if you actually see it done, you'll be like, oh, that's how they do it? I mean, it's it's not hard. But there, there, there's equipment that's designed um, just for that. Okay. okay. So, because you have, because um, we have something, I mean, without actually showing you a picture, it would be kind of hard to, you know, imagine what it looks like. But, like, for example, we have something called a fifth-wheel saddle. Mm-hmm. And the saddle, it probably weighs probably about 150 pounds or whatever. And it's um, it looks like a, a big rectangle. And for my company, all their equipment is orange. Mm-hmm. And they lock the saddle into the fifth wheel of the other truck. And then the saddle has what we call J-hooks on the top of it. And those hooks attach to the um, the front axle of the next truck. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they put the truck on top of it, you know, fasten it down super tight. And then they'll do the same thing. But these are only for trucks with fifth wheels. We transport everything. So if you have what we call, you know, cabin chassis, which is basically the truck um, without the finished body, they'll put a saddle on the frame. And then they'll sit the next truck on top of the saddle, so on, so on. And then we also have um, this thing that we call a Z-wing. Some companies call them Z-bars. And they look like, you know, a Z, the letter Z. Now, they're huge. These things weigh about a ton. Mm-hmm. And it's the, it's the same process. They hook it to the front truck, and then the back of the Z-Wing, they hook up the second truck, and so forth and so forth. Okay, okay. So I never, like I said, I've I seen the trucks. I've seen them. But I never I, I never knew how how you guys get them up, get them up like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I never Because if you think about it, when you see car carriers, it's, it's the same industry. It's like... Car, new cars go to a dealership. So it's like, with truck drivers, how do they get their trucks? Well, some get them through the companies, but it's even with the companies. How do the companies get the trucks? They either go to the dealership and buy them, or a lot of times we actually deliver the trucks straight to the customer. Because I've been to quite a few of the company's yards delivering trucks to them. Okay, okay. But a lot of times we take them straight to the dealership. Okay, so straight to the uh, so straight to the dealership. So where where do you go to pick where do you go to pick them up? Like I said before, uh, and I was wrong in that, so I apologize. But do you okay. do you go to the do you go to the ports to to pick them up, or do you go to no no you, no you actually the, go the to way the, well the way my company um, that I'm contracted with is is designed the way they set it up. We normally just like I guess you guys have pickup yards because like I said, I've never did traditional trucking. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a lot of stuff I don't know as far as what you guys do other than what somebody might tell me. But um, we have specific locations, and the locations are typically around a factory. Okay. Because, like, Mack trucks, 
most of the Mack trucks are built up in Pennsylvania. Right. So once the truck is constructed and put together, it's dropped off at certain locations. Okay. Now, we have a yard in a little city called McCungie. Mm-hmm. McCungie is probably an hour away from Philly. But anyway, um, that's where the Mack trucks are. You know, once they're put together, they put them all in like one central location. Okay. And we have a yard in McCungie where we pick them up at. And then like also deliver Volvos. The majority, Mack and Volvo are really the same company. But yeah. when we do the Volvos, they're manufactured in Virginia. Mm-hmm. They have, um, and it's like, it's not one plant. The plants are scattered. Okay. But once the truck is completed, they drop it off in a place called Dublin. Now, Dublin is du- probably an hour outside of Roanoke. Dub- Dublin, Ohio? or No, Dublin, Virginia. Oh, Dublin, Virginia, because there is a Dublin, Ohio, yeah. too. Right, because every time I say Dublin, people look at me like I'm crazy. I, I'm, it's thinking, a very I'm, I'm thinking when you, when you just said Dublin, I'm, I'm thinking Ohio. I, I, thought, I, I no. thought Dublin, Ohio. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Right. No, and like I said, that's where most of our yards are. Because like Freightliners, we also do Freightliners or Internationals, and we also call International Navistar. Those trucks are mostly manufactured in Mexico. So when they come across the border, and it's the same thing, they're hooked up, they're you know stacked up like dominoes or whatever in Mexico, and the uh, Mexican drivers they bring them they bring across them the border, across the and border, they, and then you guys go and pick them up at the uh, at the yard at, at the job yard in Laredo. So okay. Laredo is a border town. So they cross, as soon as they cross over, they bring them to the yard in Laredo. They park them there. And then a lot of times they might get reconfigured. And because it goes according to who bought what truck. Okay. So they might take them down or they might take, you know, one truck off the back, put another truck. They'll just change them around, check them, make sure they're good. We'll come again from that yard, distribute them throughout the U.S. and Canada. All right. So everybody, I know we just, uh, me me and this young lady, we just jump right into the conversation. See, that's what we do over here. You know, I'm not your average uh, interviewer, interviewee type thing. You know, what I like to do with uh, with people with people I bring on, I like to I like to sit back, relax, and conversate with them, and I just pretty much give them the platform so they can you know share their experiences. So at this time, I would like to introduce to you guys uh, Miss D Deanna D no no D, is it D, no it, D, it's D D Nidra D Nidra. See how I be beating up people's names, man. <laughs> I be people, and don't, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. I, I'm so no, sorry. I, but, the, but to make it easier for you, nobody really knows me by my first name unless you really, really, really know me. Okay. So most people call me D. D. All right. Most then that's then that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. That's what I'm gonna call you uh, going for D. So let me uh, okay. reintroduce that's you, fine. my girl D, right here. Um, <laughs> Go ahead and uh, give a little. Go, go ahead and uh, tell my listeners and my viewers uh, a little bit about yourself. I mean, I don't know where you want me to start. My story is long. I'm a chatterbox. I could go on for hours, and you don't have that kind of time. <laughs> well, I, I, I tell you what, just get, just give me the cliff notes, like where you know where where you was, you know where you from. Uh, and, oh, I'm from Shottown, baby. Oh, you up here? You you up here where I'm at? I'm I'm up here in Illinois too. That's crazy. Okay, yes, I'm born and raised from Chicago. I've been to other places, but that that's my home. That's where my heart is at. I don't live there now, but yeah, I'm from Chicago. All right. Um, I mean, all I can say, I I can guess my stories is I don't know because what I've noticed when um I'm in a, a lot of uh, chat groups with other female truck drivers, mostly sisters. A lot of our stories are the same. We kind of got in, into the industry because of our children. And I can honestly say um, my my pathway into this was a little crooked, the way I like to explain it, because I didn't do things in order. Mm-hmm. But it was like, you know, I was a teenage mom. Uh, I had to hit the ground running, figure out how to do things or whatever. I had moved out to the West Coast with an armed baby trying to figure things out. Um, fell on my ass a couple times, ended up having to come back home. By the time I came back home, I had just turned 21 and couldn't find a job. And I'm looking because I didn't finish uh, college. I mean, finished high school, but uh, I kept dropping out of school at college because having a baby and trying to work and 
and I'm young, you know, I want to do some things. Nothing was meshing. So long story short, I started driving a school bus because that's the only thing that would hire me. I've always loved to drive. So I did the school bus for maybe two years. Did you did you go and did 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 you start driving the school bus like right off the rip or did you have to go to school or did the or did the school bus company uh train you to get your class? The school bus in? company trained me. Okay. Because back then it was a company called Willette in Chicago. They're not there anymore. Late law bought them up. Mm-hmm. But I had started with uh Willette and I was with them, like I say, about two and a half years. Um, I ended up leaving the industry because I was sexually harassed big time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and it was it was depressing. <laughs> it was it was mentally it was exhausting. Um, so I felt like you know I, I couldn't continue because it, I had transferred within the company several times, thinking it would get better. So I would go to different locations, and the same thing kept happening. So I'm like, I, I just give up. Um, and I, I had a friend who was uh, a safety guy at the school bus company. He had left and went and started a company with somebody else driving coach buses. And he had called me one day and was like, you know, do you want to come over? And the same thing. I didn't train. Um, he just threw me in a bus and was like, drive it. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Damn it, man. And a coach bus is a lot different than a school bus. It's a lot heavier. It's longer. It's taller. And I'm sitting there trembling, scared. And he's like, drive it. I'm like, what the heck? I can't drive this thing. (laughs) Long story short, I was in that industry the majority of my adult life. Um, I ended up leaving, not on my own accord, but I ended up working for a company called Coach USA. And I'm not sure if you are familiar with them. But they're also tied to Megabus. And I know you may have heard of yeah, Megabus. I, yeah, before. I'm familiar with Megabus. Exactly. Yeah, and because and, Megabus is actually a foreign company. It's not a U.S. company. Um, so when they brought Megabus over, they kind of said, we don't want to be bothered with Coach USA anymore. Because Coach USA, I'm not quite sure the whole history behind Coach, but it was um, privately owned companies all across the U.S., mm-hmm. you know, mom and pops. Somebody decided to just buy them all up. Okay. And when they bought them all up, they put them all up under one umbrella, Coach USA. So and all of a sudden you get all these this 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 huge company, but it was a bunch of mom and pops that were bought up. Okay. So it was all up under it was all up under Coach USA, but was they all independently operated by the same by no, you know by the no, people or was no, it so were, Coach no, USA operated were, the whole shebang? The whole shebang. Oh, okay. Bought it all up. Okay. And and I had heard a rumor that Ross Perot was behind it. I don't know how true that was. I never looked into it. But it was it was always privately held. It was never, uh, from what I was told, it wasn't a public company because you couldn't go online and buy stock. But because um, eventually it, it imploded. I mean, it lasted a very long time. But eventually uh, it went by the wayside. They more so focused on Megabus. And that was probably back in 2009, 2010. And I had been at, th- at that point, I had been with Coach USA. I want to say I was going on 13 years. I was about to do uh, my anniversary for my 13th year. Um, and that's like I said, they, that was the last company and, I ended up with. And that's when and they, they, that's, they pushed you guys out as far, you know, they, they, man, they, they off. kicked us out and said, get the hell on. Wow. <laughs> they, like, they, they didn't give I'm you no, they, did, like, they, they didn't give you no severance package or anything like that. They they did they did but it was small oh, they did right. um, because at that point in time because I they were doing my medical insurance I mean of course I was paying for it it was coming out of our checks but it was at a low you know at a low rate um, when they gave us the boot and gave us the package I know you I don't know if you've heard of Cobra before mm-hmm. but Cobra Cobra is who you can get your insurance from right. once you know you've um, I guess been kicked to the boot and you know from the company right. but Cobra charges like I think six hundred a month. I'm like, who the hell can afford that? And you're not working. So, so how can you afford it? Wow. They, hell, basically, I went without insurance for a while so I could figure stuff out. And I was like, hell, I can't do that. And I don't know. And like I said, the so, only thing I had driven was a bus. So Now, mind you, I did end up going back to school and I got my degree in, in psych. And, but I kept driving because I love to drive. I love it. D, D, I want to I want to bring your attention back to uh, – Back, back to the harassment. I mean, I now if you don't want to talk about it, I can understand if you know. No, dark, it's, it's been that's, a while. That's a I have no problem right with that. There. Go ahead. But uh, this, this is something for a lot of, especially for a lot of female drivers that's coming into the industry that they have to 
uh, that they have to watch out for, for, you know, drivers being inappropriate, uh, being inappropriate to them. You, you was, um, the, the company, the previous company that you was with, you said that you was, uh, you was harassed and everything. Can you go into detail about, uh, about that time? And, and, uh, was there anything that you, that you have done to, you know, to, let somebody of of you know upper management know that that was happening to you well you know this was back in god when i was driving the speed bus this was back in i want to say the the late 90s no early 90s Mm -hmm. all through yeah all through the 90s because i didn't i started driving um i didn't switch over until i think the coach department to like 97. So yeah, this is like the early Mm nineties. Um, back then it it wasn't, uh, it wasn't important because you know, the me too moment is that just now picking up steam, you know, from what a year or so ago Mm -hmm. where, you know, they take your, they they take your claim serious Mm -hmm. back then, you know, it it was kind of frowned upon if you said something. So I would just kind of keep my head down and just try to do my job. And I was young. I mean, I had just turned 21 when I got into that industry. And I remember vividly, I was at a um, at a yard, and I mean, I, I've always been a hustler. Mm-hmm. So I would do two, three runs. I don't know if you understand how the school buses go, but you would have a morning run, and then you would have an afternoon run, like, you know, right. when the kids got out of school. Right, right. Yeah, um, so if you yeah, have I'm a driver, yeah. right, so you, if you have a driver not showing up, then you have an open route. Mm-hmm. So it was nothing for me to do two routes in the morning. You know, I'm, I'm delivering kids to two different schools because somebody didn't show up. Okay. Sometimes it might be three runs. You, you're doing three routes. So I was hustling. And then in the middle, you don't have anything to do from morning to, to evening. Right, to until, you go and pick up, until you go and pick up the kids. Right. So they would have what you call charters. Now, charters would be the kids are going on a field trip mm-hmm. or anything like that. You're still you're dealing with school kids because it's a school bus. Right. So I was doing all of that, making money hand over fist. Okay. And I came in one afternoon and I'm talking to the dispatcher and I'm like, yeah, you know, do I have a charter? And he looked at me, he said, so do you think I'm going to keep feeding you charters? And I'm like, what do you mean? Do you mean? Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, if I don't get some in return, I'm not going to keep giving them to you. Huh? I'm like, are you serious right now? And this is and this is what he was saying to me. And he was like, you know, and he had asked me out a couple of times prior, but he's an older guy. I wasn't attracted to him. Like I just want to do my job, but he was the guy who sent, who dished out the charters, and he was like, you know, if I don't get what I want, he said, like, I'm not gonna keep giving you charters. I'm like, wow, black guy, and all I could white do was guy, cry. No, he was black. He's a brother. Wow. He's a brother. I hate to say it, wow. the majority of times I've been harassed, it's always been my people. It's a damn. It has shame. always been my people. It's, that's a damn. Because because with with the white people, <laughs> they act like and nothing against white people. But anytime I have ever been approached by a white guy, he's always like super bashful and, you know, well, black women don't act like they like us. And I mean, it's it's always kind of on an innocent tip mm-hmm. until they can, you know, kind of, I guess, get your guard down before they, you know, the jump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but brothers, no. Brothers are just, you know, out there with it. They don't care what you think. Yeah, so that's, this, this is what so, I'm coming so for. This, so this dude is, is using his using his authority to to garner some type of sexual uh appetite appetite from you right yeah yeah please tell me you didn't and like i said so please tell it, me you it didn't was, give in to that though no of course not but that's why i said i kept having to transfer because willette at that time was a pretty big company and at the same time i was there um they had bought a company called spears and they had put the companies together. So we had several terminals throughout the city. So I just transferred to a different terminal, thinking it would get better. And it didn't. It was it was the same crap. So And I can honestly say the last time, um, when I finally decided to leave, I had transferred like three times. The third time I transferred, um, I was at a yard where a female was in charge. Okay. So she was a terminal manager. So I'm I'm thinking I'm going to be good. You know, right. it's a female. I'm not going to have these these issues. Right. But the guy up under her was her guy. 
He was second in, in command, and he was her dude. They they were dating. Okay, so wait, 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 now, wait, wait, wait. Please tell me you're not about to. Please tell me you're not about to say what I think you're about to say. What is that? that <laughs> I told you I dealt with it no matter where I went. I still dealt with sexual harassment, wow. and I, I got it there too. I got it there too. And the crazy thing about it with him, he was so oh just blunt with it. I was sitting in the um, driver's room one day. You know, having lunch, whatever, we're all sitting around watching TV. He slid up next to me, and I hate to even say it like this, but when he slid up next to me, I've always been a very approachable person back then. Right. Because now I have that rest and bitch face. Right. I don't try, but it. <laughs> right. Don't, but don't I, fuck, I'm very, don't I'm a, fuck I'm with a, me face. I got you. Right. And now, because even with cursing, when I first got in the industry, I was so innocent. I did not curse. It got to a point people would approach me like, dang, what, what is with your mouth? And they were like, you curse like a sailor. Because I had learned, it, which I thought, the more I could throw them words out there, it would back you off. So that's how come I, I started cursing like that. Because I was like, you know, without the curse words, you're thinking, you're looking at me like a little kid. You think I'm innocent. You know, you think you can come at me any old kind of way. Mm -hmm. So I felt like if I could talk the game, I would get you to back up off me. Mm. And it's so damn, I, I learned it's that, a, and it's, it's a damn shame that these that, that, that those men turn 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 this feet this beautiful female's heart, and I mean turn it black, and you know, and sometimes you know, like some guys, some guys always wonder why females, you know, like you know, like trucker females act the way they act now. You you don't know they you don't know their background. You know, you don't know, like, oh my like my girl D right here, she, you know, her background, she had many men that came up in, you know, that disrespect her and just made her the woman that she is today. Just like other women that's in this industry, you don't know their background. You don't know what happened to to turn around and, and judge uh, a female you know, because of the way she come after you or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm going to be uh, the first. Because I can honestly say, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be the first to say I'm 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 sorry. I apologize for these dumb <laughs> niggas out here, for real. I, I apologize <laughs> for that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's just wrong. Somebody in power try to use their power to force some type of sexual relationship out of you just because, you know, in order for you to advance, you know what I'm saying? So right. that's not cool. Yeah. Like I said, it, it, it could be subtle, but I also have to look at it as maybe some of the things that happened were supposed to push me in another direction for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, when I was harassed at the school bus company, it pushed me into the coaches. When the company dissolved, you know, it pushed me into trucking. Because I actually wish I had gotten into trucking sooner. But um, but like I say, the, the last incident that pushed me out of the school bus industry, uh, he approached me when I was sitting down minding my business. And he just said that you would never think what he said to me. Mm. I, I give you a second to even take a guess what he said to no, me. No guessing. Now, we're, no, we're, no at, guessing. we're at the job. No, no guessing. <laughs> Uh -uh. I, I, I even when when a female even asked me like, "Yo, lockout man, guess how old I am?" Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Uh -uh. Well, just, he just he, he, this, walked, he said. He, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right. He he said next to me, and like I said, I had been at this yard probably at least a school year already because this was towards the summer when school was about to let out. So I had interacted with him off and on quite a bit, but it was all professional. You know, I mean, we bus drivers, when you have that downtime, they play cards, you're watching TV. Some people might go home. Most people would hang around the yard back in those days mm -hmm. and and play dominoes. You got black folks. They, you know, you like you had a cookout, a barbecue. So everybody's kind of relaxed. And like I said, when he walked over to me, he caught me totally off guard with what he said. But he's like, damn, you got a fat cat. And he didn't say cat. I, I'm trying to keep it clean. What? And I'm mortified. I'm mortified because you have to remember I'm young. I'm in my early 20s. So this is really my first time experiencing this kind of crap. And I felt I felt so low. I felt like shit. I was like, what did he really just say to me? I wanted to cry. But I kept thinking, you what is that going to get? You should have smacked you know? that motherfucker. You, you, you <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe he said it. And I'm just, I didn't know the what to say or how to act. disrespect, man. 
I, I could, I didn't know what to do. And I, I could say one thing, I've never been a person to run and quit. So I just kept coming in and doing my job because he, when he said it to me, I, I guess he was scared. He didn't know if I was going to report him or whatever. You like, I had never seen him. anything happen. But then again, I've never seen anything happen. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. All I've ever seen is retribution. Right. That's all I've ever seen, retribution. And he thought, now mind you, he actually did think I was going to say something because re- remember, his girlfriend was a terminal manager. She was the boss. So I never said anything. I just wanted to get through the day, do my job, leave me the hell alone. You know, if you, he said something. I'm assuming because, like I told you, I was I was I was a hustler. I'm doing two three runs. I'm doing charters. All of a sudden, it stopped. And like I say, she was the one who was handing out the work because she was trying to manage her. Her attitude got real funky toward me. Now you she know what it really is. You, you know what it was. You know what it was. He he what? went back. He went back and down taught you. That's why. See, I'm I'm thinking I don't I don't know. I'm I'm thinking if if you it's it it still would have been a double edged sword on you anyway, because if you would have went back and told her what he said, then he could have probably went back and told her like, nah, nah, she just saying that because you know, yada 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 and all like that. But see, being that you you know, you you not showing no interest in this in this brother. He went back. He went back and down taught you, and that's why that's why your 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 shit went from up to down because now she he's in her ear talk he's in her ear uh, talking shit about you. So right, right, and like I said, I was young and naive, but I've always had a fighting spirit. So I just felt like you know if I hunker down, keep my head down, do my job, it'll get better. And like I said, the last day of school. Um, he saw me walking across the yard. This is, you know, the, the shift's over, we're done. Uh, unless you're doing, you know, summer school. And the only way you could really do summer school, you had to have seniority because school bus companies were union back then. I don't know what they are now. So I didn't have seniority. I had only been driving the school bus, you know, almost a little less than you know, three years. So I had no seniority. So I knew I wasn't going to have a summer route. And, you know, I'm walking across the yard, heading to my car, and he saw me. And he hollered out, you know, you coming back next year? I threw him the bird. I never looked at him. I threw the bird and kept walking. Because all I kept thinking was, you really think I'm going to be back up here and put up with your ass? Yeah, not yeah, going to happen. With that bullshit. And, I'm glad, I'm, and I, I walked out. I'm glad you did. You, 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 I'm, I'm glad you did. Man. That's, 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 that's that strong black woman shit right there, man. But still, you know, as like as of today, you know, as as now that's you know that sexual harassment is like in the forefront in the forefront of all businesses right now, you know, they they do you know that they 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 talk about that right off the rip. You know, they show videos. They you know they they let you know like if you have any problem with anybody because now companies uh, take sexual harassment serious. Yeah, but now it's like within the company because what I do now, I'm a contractor Mm -hmm. because I can say, you know, let me backtrack right before when I first got in the truck, I was harassed. I I just totally forgot about another incident um, because the harassment is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just not as as pervasive. It it doesn't happen as much because I'm by myself a lot. Mm -hmm. So if it happens, it happens because I run into somebody or I'm in close proximity to somebody. Because when I first got, and this is the first time something actually went in my favor. Um, I was doing what we call singles. Now, when we're doing singles, that means you're only delivering one truck. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed on the highway. Have you ever seen a tractor going down the road and it's a truck or a little car attached to the back of it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Is that your car? Okay. we We call that toady. Um, so toting, not because you might think I'm saying towing, but I'm not, I'm saying toting like a, like a toad, a frog, okay, toting. right? Because you're towing a vehicle on all four wheels. Okay. They refer to it as toting. It's, it's a couple other terms they use for it. Okay. Anyway, a lot of times, and I used to think it was the truck driver's personal car I, or something. Yeah. That's you why know? I just got finished it's, asking it's, you. Was, was that your car or no? No, oh. no, no. The car that's attached is mine, Oh, it's, but what it is, is, is you're delivering the truck. Mm-hmm. So it's not that truck is not yours. You're you're delivering the truck. Once you deliver the truck out, you disattach your car, and that's your transportation to either get to another truck or to go home. Oh, so that's a whole nother industry. Oh, okay. So you 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 
you have a single, you have, well, you actually have two trucks, one that you actually drive and the other one that you're, that you're towing or towing. Well, it's a, per, it's a personal car. Okay. When okay. I, when I say truck, I mean like a SUV or, right. um, or like a, or a Ford F-150. Everybody has whatever kind of vehicle they want. Because when I was doing it, I had a Jeep chair. Oh, you, oh, okay. My, my and, bad, my, my bad. You know what? My bad. I'm, I'm, I'm vision. I'm, I'm vision it wrong. You you drive in the truck that you're delivering, but there's your right. just the one car behind it is yours. Right. Okay. Okay. That's I'm I'm vision I'm 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 visioning it. <laughs> duh, I mean, uh, different. I'm I'm thinking you got two okay. trucks and the car, which I think no, I've seen something no. like that before, though. You probably haven't yeah, been paying attention. I, I it's a, called it's called drive away. Yeah, it's called drive away. The ind- the industry is called drive away because basically you're picking up the vehicle and you're driving it away, and and you're delivering it to wherever. Because that industry, you can either be delivering new trucks, used trucks, and you're picking up God knows everything. I've delivered everything, mm-hmm. and I was always hooking up my car to the back. Okay, okay. So it was like, but before I got my own car, the company I was with would you know sometimes team me up with somebody else who had their own car so you would run with that person you know you would have a truck they would have a truck and then once you were done you know they would unhook the vehicle and you would both ride back in their vehicle wherever you're you know you might be going and this particular go round, um the dispatcher i was working with older black guy really sweet i had just got the industry he was trying to show me the ropes so he was like, you know, I got somebody. He say, uh, you can ride with him. He said, I'm going to give you guys a few trucks, you know, circle the company, you know, the U.S., drop these trucks off, and you'll be in his his car with him. I said, okay, fine. Do you know this guy? He told me, yeah. I said, okay. I met the guy. The guy looked like Santa Claus, and I'm not exaggerating. He looked like Santa, um, and he was Caucasian. <laughs> I didn't have an issue riding with the guy. I thought he was cool. Only prime my head off the bat, chain smoker. So the entire time in the car, he's smoking. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm dying over here. But, you know, he called himself cracking the windows. And then the funny thing was his girlfriend kept calling. The entire time in the car, his girlfriend kept calling. And I had asked him later, why is your girlfriend keep calling? And he was like, well, I told her I had this young lady with me. I said, ah, oh, she think I want your old ass. That's what I'm thinking in my head. I didn't say that to him. So <laughs> I'm sitting back laughing to myself. And I was like, please tell her she has nothing, nothing to worry, to worry about. about. Nothing at all. <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. So what happened was we're, you know, riding along trying to go find these trucks. We want to pick up some box trucks from um, one of the um, auction houses that, you know, auction off all kind of equipment, farm equipment, trucks, tractors, everything. He couldn't find a place. And we ended up getting lost. And by the time we found the place, we had lost a whole day. So, you know, we're under the same DOT restrictions as everybody else. So we had to, um, you know, hunker down and get a room and start out again the next day. He played a game on me and I I took it as, okay, I'm going to trust him. Mm -hmm. But he was like, you know, my car don't work and da, 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 da. So we ended up having to share a room because he played, I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, well, I think he thinks I'm naive because I look extremely young you know, so I'm thinking he think I'm I'm a, I'm a newbie because like I say, by the end, I'm in my late 30s, early 40s. You know, so he think, you know, I'm young and naive. I'm stupid. He plays as I don't have any money. OK, fine. So we got a, a two room. You know, I mean, one room with the two beds. And um, I had the, you know, bed by the window. Long story short, I never took a stitch of my clothes off. I don't even think I took my damn shoes off. And he had made the comment. He was like, um. You know, if you want to, you know, take your clothes off and get comfortable, you know, I don't mind. I won't touch you. And I looked over at him like, what the hell did you just say to me? You, I was like, wow. wow. I, you know what? I mean, so I, did you, I, you know, it was another, it was another female driver that I, that I talked to recently and, and the company that she was with wanted, wanted her to share the hotel room with, you know, with her male counterpart. And I, I didn't think that was, I, I, I didn't think that was appropriate. I, I thought that. Oh, please. That happens all the time because companies want to save money. I, I, that happens all the time. I, I, I don't think that's appropriate though. I mean, like, uh, unless, it's, unless I, I you, un, not, unless you, happens. unless you and the driver, unless you and the driver, uh, you know, is okay with it. You know, you and the right. male counterpart is okay with it, but 
I don't think it's appropriate for a for the company to to assume that y'all to you know to put y'all two together in the in the same room. You know, I I think he should. I think he should. Well, that but in the industry I'm talking about though, uh, because in the busing side they they have done that too. But because I was an employee. But in the driveway thing, you're you're a contractor, mm -hmm. so everything is on you. You know how companies try to get away with that now. It's not on us. You're a contractor. You made that choice on your own. And my thing was the dispatcher who had put us together. I had known him for a little while. I trusted him, and he was the one who had told me the guy was okay. Mm -hmm. And this is professional. We're working, mm -hmm. so I felt like okay, if we have to share a room, fine. But this is only going to happen this one time. And I told him that. And like I say, after he made that comment, I looked at him dead in his face, and I said, if we even think about coming over here. I swear to you, you're gonna regret it. Oh, that's right. Man. And he got he got super quiet. He didn't say another word to me, and he had an attitude the whole rest of the trip. We went and got the trucks, got done, got to our next stop, and I called my dispatcher and I told him what happened. He thought he, he and I was like, you, you know, he, get get me the hell out of his car. I can't take it. Give me a truck going somewhere else. I'll figure it out. I'm like, I'm not riding with him any longer because I had to. We had to share a room one more time on the way back. And he was sitting there with an attitude the entire time, staring at me, smoking. And again, I'm laying in the bed, all my clothes on. And this time I'm right by the door. Yeah. He, and like I said, you, I had he's told him you that, more uh, than one time. He's giving you that, uh, that, that Michael Myers vibe, man. No, you should, what you should have did. He see, was. see this, I mean, I understand this is, you know, I understand you. This is like, you know, you, you learn, this is learning experience because now now you know, like, yo, I would get my own, uh, I would get my own room, and you guys just reimburse me, cause I'm not comfortable. Right, right. You know, I'm not comfortable. because that's what happens when when you start now, right? and you don't really, you know, you start now, you know, how much, da da da, and yeah, that that was, and the reason why we ended up sharing a room that last time, it was the last room the hotel had, and all I kept thinking, is, what the hell's going on? It was the last room. And it was a smoking room. And I'm sitting back like, oh, my God, because I got to get some rest. So and I was trying to not be a total bitch because, mind you, I'm still riding with him in his car. Oh, okay. So I'm yeah, like, you if, didn't if wanna... I totally get into it with this yeah, man, you didn't he's going to throw me out in I... on somewhere. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know. Right. I, I don't know, so I, I'm you trying. still could have, you know, like I said, I yeah, I, I understand. No, but... like I said, I made that call. I, he didn't know I made the call, but I made the call. Okay. So my dispatcher didn't tell him, but he called him and he, he routed us, you know, to where I can get my own truck and get the hell up out of there. Got you. And right after that happened, um, my dispatcher called me back and I was like, you know what happened? He said they fired him. Yeah. Now, when when you're a contractor, it's not like considered fire. They just cancel your contract. They just cancel your contract. So, he, he can pretty much go and he can go somewhere else and end up and end up doing the exact same thing to another uh, to another female driver. I, I really I really don't know how that works out, because, like I say, a lot of these driveway companies, they all know each other because of the industry. The industry is, is, is big, but it's not that big, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's like all these companies know one another. And the crazy part about it, remember when you said on the school bus side, when the guy probably went behind my back and badmouthed mm -hmm. me, that's exactly what this guy did because he didn't realize I was close to my driver manager. He didn't know. So he called my driver manager back right after I called. Actually, he called him and was like, yeah, man, I don't know what's, what's with this woman you put me with. It just started bad talking mm -hmm. about me. And my dispatcher called me and told me, I was like, are you kidding me? I, Seriously? <laughs> I'm like, so because he couldn't, you know, sweet talk his way into my draws or treat me like I'm a kid, because obviously he thought I was younger than what I was, he, you know, goes back and, you know, bath mouth me. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. But like that's, I said, I nice, nastily threatened him under my breath. So he knew not to make a that's, move. But that's what some of these, I hurry up and went and got my own transportation after that. After that, I had my own. That's what the that's what these some bum this was some of these bum niggas do, man. They they do they do bum yeah. nigga shit. You know, that's that's bum nigga shit. Right they there, they, man. they do. And it's it's bad to say because um, you get it from all different angles. And for a woman, it is hard. And and like I say, when I'm in these social groups with other females, we, we talk about all kind of stuff that happens to us out there. Um, and I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. 
But again, I'm not doing tradi- traditional trucking. Right. So, so I'm not at the truck stop sleep overnight. So you know, I'm mostly in a hotel. So let's talk about uh let's uh let's talk about um and I appreciate I, I appreciate you, you know, you giving your story and everything. Let's uh let's talk about you, you know, let's talk about your trucking aspect. And you, you know, you're you're not doing uh traditional uh uh, trucking and you mentioned you know you mentioned earlier that you know you're not familiar of what you know us conventional truckers do out here you know what i'm saying so of course you do have your you do have your cdls your cdl a right did you did you go to school yeah. to to get your cdl a or did you or did you or was you grandfathered in to your cdl a no, I wasn't grandfather because you know with a bus you only have to have a C. Right. I'm sorry. I'm B. sorry. I'm sorry. Not a C. A B. B. You have to be a B. Mm-hmm. So I had my B, and I've had my B for forever because I got my B when I turned 21. Mm-hmm. So I had to. I had, yeah, I didn't have to because the company that I'm actually with told me when I got recruited, you know, if I could just borrow somebody's truck and go take the test. I didn't feel comfortable doing that, but they were based on the fact that I had had my CDL for as long as I right, had. Right, right. You know, you had your B, so you pretty much know your doing... pre-trip, your post-trip, and all that other good stuff. Right, right. But I didn't feel comfortable okay. because I didn't know squat about trucks. So it was like, you know, me personally, I'm like, I need to go take the class. Okay. So I went to um, a, a small trucking school and paid out of pocket and got my, um, my A. And I also had to get endorsements. Because to do what I do, you have to have doubles and triples. Of course. Um, and then I also got tanker. Oh, okay. Because of the different vehicles and stuff that we move. I used to have my hazmat, but I ended up letting my hazmat go because I had too much other stuff going on. Because you have to get fingerprinted and da da da. I didn't have the time. Now what hazmat? So I ended up the hazmat. Now, go. now what hazmat? Because I'm thinking about getting my hazmat. Do is it true what they say about hazmat that it it expires? I heard somebody told yeah, me that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to, it's, it's not an endorsement that just automatically stays. You ha- you have to keep doing stuff to keep the hazmat on your oh, license. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's, that's good that, to know. And that's how come I had to let it go. Okay. That's how come I had to let it go. Okay, that's. Because I think, I even think you have to retake the test, uh, Um, I think, every so oh, often. Okay, that's good to I know. I didn't have time. Okay, that's good to yeah, know. Yeah, I didn't have I time, thought, so I had to let it go. I thought getting your hazmats, once you get them, you got them, just like your tankers and your, nope. your doubles and triples. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Nope. <laughs> so thirty years, so so thirty years of driving. You you jumped into uh you jumped into a truck in uh twenty ten, um, so this uh the 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 type of trucking that you do now you you don't do you don't pull semi you don't pull trailers or nothing like that. You just you, you just pull trailer, you just pull tractors. Class huh. <laughs> That's the only trailer I've ever pulled. Now, I take that back. I pulled a trailer one time. Mm-hmm. My, uh, I, I dropped a, a single in Florida. You know, when I say single, I mean one truck. Mm-hmm. When I dropped a single in Florida, my dispatcher called me and asked me to pick up a trailer and take it to the port. Okay. Blew me away because I had never done that. And I had freaked out because I was scared because I had never moved anything other than one truck. Okay. And um, But I dropped it with no problem. Got it on in there and dropped it off and did my thing. Okay. So I got it in there. I was terrified. Like I said, I had never done it. So. Now you, but now, now you, you said in your bio right here that uh that you don't see women you 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 don't see women doing the doing the type of trucking you doing. So you there's not there's, out there. there's not that many women. They're out there, but we're in very small numbers. Okay. We're very small numbers, because just like with you guys, when they say no touch freight. Mm-hmm. And what I do, they also have something similar where they call the drivers hub drivers. Mm -hmm. And basically hub means you're driving the load to the hub, you're jumping out of it, you're catching a flight or you're going to the hotel, you're done with it. Those are hub drivers. So what what I do, I undeck. So we're called, you know, undeck drivers. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of women doing what I do. They're out there. But compared to the men, we're very small. Okay. So... It's, it's take take me through take take me through uh how you came across this company i mean did somebody this did, did, did somebody uh referred you or you found this company on your my own my best friend my best friend because when i got laid off from the buses uh mind you i've been working since i was 16 okay 
And I told you I was a single parent. So, I mean, by this time, my daughter's grown, married, all of that. But you, once you get in that mode, it's hard to come out of it. So, I mean, I went from I'm always at work. Always, my life is so busy to I don't have a job. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there like, what the freak? Okay. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Okay. And my best friend called me because at the time, my best friend was working for uh, CTA. That's the transit authority in Chicago. I never wanted to work for them. Mm-hmm. But um, he had called me. He said, you know, a friend of mine, you know, told me about this industry. And he started explaining to me. I'm like, what the hell? And he's like, you know, yeah, you deliver trucks and da, da, da. You're making all this money. And I'm like, huh? So he gave me the information and I called. And I can say that's where it started. Okay. I called them. They did an interview over the phone. They, because like I said, I was, I was, when I first started, I was working for a company called Bennett. Mm -hmm. Now, Bennett's offices are actually located in Georgia. Yeah, I'm familiar with Never, ever have I been to the location. I'm I'm familiar. I I think I I did, I think I did a make the call video about Bennett. Okay. Yeah. Never have I ever been to their office because that's how this industry is. Because even for the company I'm contracted with now, (laughs) they're located in uh, Independence, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I have never been to the office. Because the office is not a terminal. It's just where all the people are that make decisions about what you do. Okay. <laughs> that's 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 just where they are. But I've never been there. And this, you know, this industry, you get hired over the phone, you're doing everything online. Mm-hmm. I mean, we get paid online. Everything's online. Everything is online. Basically, everything. You know, especially some everything. especially some companies like out in Chicago. I call them black site companies mm-hmm. out in Chicago. A okay. lot of them a lot of them are overseas like well not overseas but they're okay. they're not here they they have a office and that's it they're they're dispatchers their safety department their um uh, their uh uh whatever you want to call it is all done through email and they're you know they're either at home or in another office that's not here in the states so yeah, I, right. I, I know, I know, I, I, I know where you come. I know where you're coming from as far as as far as uh as far as you know not not being here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's how it started because, like I said, I was doing the singles, and um, eventually the money in the singles just wasn't cutting mm-hmm. it. And then, like I said, I I was in I was actually in Hagerstown, um, Maryland, picking up a single, hey, and there was a recruiter there that was trying to recruit for the company that I'm currently contracted with. And when I met him, you know, he was like, um, you know, how come you don't work for us? And it was ironic. He said that because I had actually applied for that company prior, never heard back. Mm -hmm. So he was like, well, what is your name? And I started laughing. I'm like, well, and this, I actually said this, I said, you guys actually hire little black girls. (laughs) And that's exactly how I said it. Because in the industry, when I first got out there, all I saw was everybody else. Mm -hmm. I didn't see many of us at all doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't start seeing more of us doing it until I started going to different regions of the U S cause you're all over the country doing what I do. Mm. And, and like I said, most of the time, cause I was mostly hauling from Wisconsin parts of Texas. And like I say, most of the drivers I kept running into were other, it just wasn't I us. Got you. And, and, so, and that's what made me make that comment to him. And he laughed and he was like, you know, yeah, he say, and this is what he said. Yeah, we got one. He say, that's just as short as you. She may be shorter. That's exactly what he said. Now, he didn't say, yeah, we had a few. No, we have one. <laughs> yeah, one I laughed, but he, he was, he was, yeah, he was super cool, though. And I gave him my name and within a day they were calling me. And I was like, what the hell? I applied for you guys how long ago? And the lady was like, you know, yeah, your application expired. We need you to redo it. I'm like, okay. And basically, that's how it started. I ended up, you know, going to work for All them. All right. So, so you, so you're a company driver now. You're not a, you're not a contractor no more. No, no, you're still considered. Are oh, you still considered? So you, you, you're up under ten eight. So you, you. T- uh, 1080p <laughs> you 1099 <laughs> i'm thinking i'm thinking what the hell i'm thinking photography 1080p you're uh you're 1099 yes uh, okay now and now, yes. now yeah. you're still you're still a contractor now, as, of, yeah. as of right now c19 came in and and pretty much trashed uh trash your particular industry right who did see covid I call it C-19. Oh, 
Okay. That's like, who did? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Not, not so much trash. It's just that with any factory, everybody shut down because they were so afraid that, you know, it was going to spread because you got all these people working so close together. And now you got to clean everything. And like I said, primarily what I do now, everything I touch is brand new. Mm-hmm. So it's like if the factories aren't building them, I don't have anything to haul. I got you. I got you. Are they are are they taking care of you? Why why well you being ten ninety nine, uh Well see that's the thing. President? No, I ain't gonna say that. What's his number? Forty five? Ain't he number forty five? Forty five. President? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ain't ain't he the forty fifth? Yeah. I, I I don't know I, I don't know this 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 president don't 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 don't, don't give don't don't, don't give me the don't don't name. give me the anyway. don't give me to talk about that dude I I don't talk politics so <laughs> do not give me to start right. talking about that dude you know what I'm saying well, I got well, I got so, a so I he, got a following oh go ahead go ahead no I, I got a fo- no what he ha- what he oh, because, <laughs> you said you got to stop for it I said. I said we got I got a following of 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 diverse people out here and I don't want to piss nobody off with my <laughs> with my opinion of that man. So Oh my god. Well, what what he did, he um I don't know if he did it directly, but supposedly with unemployment, um there was supposed to be this new category for gig workers or contractors. And that's basically people who have started working for themselves like Lyft and Uber and, you know, ladies that do hair, any kind of industry where you have to file a 1099, Mm -hmm. where they're not already taking out, you know, income taxes or state or state and all Mm -hmm. that. And um, our our company did send us out an email that had links, you know, where you can file for this or file for that. Um, And then I save a lot. So I had some savings that I could sit on and I mean, I, I still got a little money, but not much. Right. You you but digging like said, into um, your savings. So yeah, you need to you need to basically. get it you need to get it back up. Right. Because oh, because since on. they don't take our taxes Hold out. That Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hello? Uh, you're on the you come to the shipping office. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, go ahead. Oh, so you still working? Yeah, yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying to get whatever whatever they can give me, man. Whatever they can give me, I try to do it. I try to do it. I get it. I get Wait, it. Go ahead, go ahead and finish yeah, up. But, um, no, I was saying, being in in the industry, being a contractor, you know, because of how we get paid and how you get your money so fast, you have to start saving mm-hmm. because you you just spending it too quick. And I got into the habit of, of saving. So, and then it's like, we've never had a slowdown like this. Never. Okay. But at the same time, you know, because you got to pay your taxes out of pocket, because at the end of the year, if I'm not making payments or paying into it, I can owe from like four to 10,000 at, you know, when tax season comes around. So it's like, if I don't already have some money saved up, that's a hell of a bill to just slap on you that you got to hurry up and pay. So I got into the habit of, you know, putting some money up and putting it to the side and, and then, you know, when you're in this industry, you kind of live frugal. Mm-hmm. Some people do. Because, uh, cause like I said, like with, you know, traditional truck drivers, I, I don't have my own place. I gave my own apartment up uh, years ago. I had a house, gave that up. Um, when I come in town, you know, I might bunker down with my daughter. Because, I, like I said, I have an adult daughter. My daughter's married. I'm already a grandma. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm single. Because mm-hmm. uh, there were times I would come in and I might stay at my guy's house, you know, when I was dating somebody. Mm-hmm. But, um. So I don't really have a lot of overhead, uh, but I am planning on, you know, coming off the road in like another year or two because uh, as, as much as I love it, there's there's just so much of a downside to it. Gotcha. And I, I can understand how come a lot of women don't get in, in, in the industry. And I think it's so unfair because I have a lot of uh, male friends that I'm really cool with that do the same thing I do. A lot of these guys are married. Now, there's a lot of them that are single, but there's a lot of the guys that are married. And I kind of feel like when you look at the women and the women that I know, none of them are married. We're all single. They do the same thing. And there's one female who I had met that was in, industry, in, in the industry ahead of me, younger than I am, bad chick. But she ended up leaving because she got married. And she got married to the guy. She stayed in the industry maybe three years after she got married. And then she left. And I was looking at her crazy like, why do you have to leave just because you're married? 
But, you know, she kind of, it was the same thing when I said about harassment. You know, she's a, she's a beautiful black girl. And a lot of times in, in my industry, like when we land at the airport, mm-hmm. because we have these central locations, they pick us up sometimes. And, you know, a company shuttle. And they'll take us either to a nearby hotel or we're either going to the yard and get our next load. Okay. So you're in this van with other drivers. And like I say, because it's only a couple of us females, you get a lot of attention. A lot. And, you know, she had guys constantly coming at her. And she had been at the company for a really long time. And she felt like, you know, she should have had earned respect by now that, you know, I'm married. Why are you coming at me? And she said it was really starting to bother you her. Know, and she ended up leaving the company. That that wasn't the only reason, you, but you know, she ended up leaving. You know, these the dudes don't care. They they don't care if you're married or not. They they still gonna they still gonna try and shoot they shot whenever they get the chance to. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's 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 a shame it's a shame be- that 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 it is what what it is in this uh especially in this particular industry right here. Cause a lot of a lot of females that I came across, a lot of them are single. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of them are single. They're single for, you know, whatever reason, you know. So my a lot of it is the mindset. And I hope I'm not, you know, ruffling any feathers with this, but I've even had guys approach me at the pump. And I've had this happen too many times because when I pull up, I'm already getting attention because of my load. Because if they see me pull in, because mind you, sometimes I, I'm I'm dragging four mm-hmm. full blown sleepers. Mm-hmm. So you're pretty long if you're, you know, driving one and you're pulling three. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they notice it instantly because if I pull up to a nose of a typical tractor trailer, I have a full truck beyond the trailer So because we can be up to 98 feet long. So it's like when, when people see us pull in and trust me, when they see me jump out and I'm only five, three. They always doing double takes. They like, already, what? They, they already, I, they already see. They, they all sharks already in the water, already in the water. Yeah, and the crazy part about it, I've had and and people watch you mm-hmm. because I've been approached inside the truck stop. Well, guys would be like, "Oh, I saw you pull up in that. Where the hell was you at that you saw me pull up in that load?" And I mean, and I've had guys that will say, "You know, is your man in the truck mm-hmm. with you?" And I'll get offended. Like, why I got to have a man in the truck with me? But then I, I get a lot of guys that'll be like, I know you must be single because ain't, ain't no dude, you know, going to be with you when you are here. I'm like, what? See, that's you, you, like, you saying you, the you saying, all, you saying all of the typical, all, all of the typical things of, of, of a typical truck driver, man, of, of all that. So, and and it, it's, it's so disheartening. Me, it's so disheartening because I had even met. I, let, go I, I No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. So I was going to say I had met a brother. Uh, who I was possibly going to date. And he's, he's a truck driver. Cause there's, there's been a few truck drivers that I have dated, but they mostly do what I do um, because they understand the industry. And then you get to see it a little bit more often because you're doing the same thing. But this guy didn't, he was on, on the traditional side. Um, and when I had met him, first thing out of his mouth, he's like, well, you're going to have to come off that truck. I'm like, why? And he was like, you know, cause uh, you're going to be right with me. And I just, I was insulted. Because all I kept thinking was, why do I have to change what I do for you and I to be wow. together? <laughs> oh, man. But that does seem to be the, the typical attitude out here. Yeah. And my first, I even had a guy, again, at the pump. So much stuff happens at the pump. I had a guy at the pump walk over to me and was like, you come work for me. I'll pay you da da da. And I looked at him like, what? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, dude, I make a pretty good living. I'm like, so what makes you think what you offer me is better than what I'm already getting? But I was insulted that he approached me like that. See, like I like I said, like, like, like wow. I said before, man, there's there's a lot of guys that just you know that just shoot their shots and just to see where it, to see where it lands. D man, let me let me. I just feel like if you, what's wrong with approaching? You know, hey, how you doing? I, I was about Be to ask you. About I, I was about to ask you what suggestions that you would give. Uh, give these give these drivers out there to to approach you. How how would you want to be approached? You know that's 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 the hard part because because I have so many of the the other stuff. I had a guy. Now I kid you not, what he said to me can be still looked at as insulting, but when he said it, it was so freaking funny. All I could do was laugh. 
I had walked into the to the station and we were in line and this this <laughs> this man walked past me who really stunk. Mm. And when he walked past me, my face just went up. And this brother who was standing not too far from me saw my face. Mm-hmm. So he said something and it, it, it kind of let my guard down because he said something kind of funny. And then he and I kind of started talking. And then he was like, do you like climbing trees? Huh? Now the guy was tall. Okay. Oh, he that's tall. That, okay. That's what he probably so, meant by that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I laughed so hard because it was so funny. But I'm looking at him like, so that's your pickup line. Do you like climbing that's, trees? That's, that'd be his pickup line. <laughs> Just because you're tall. Uh, but I've had I have had guys that will start a conversation, um, but they aren't trying to talk to me. And those are the ones that are nice. Cause they'll just, you know, well, how was your day? Or hey, how you doing? And but they aren't trying to talk. The ones who are trying to talk are the ones who say the most insulting things they can think wow. of. And I'm like, all that's going to do is make me turn my nose up and walk right past you. And a lot of times I do that because I'm I'm not one to see you. Hey, how you doing? I'm not going to do that because in this industry, you, you never know because I have had guys follow me. I've had them follow me outside my truck. Um, I had an incident one time. It was hot out. I had on shorts. And I jumped out the truck, went to the station. Before I knew it, I had a gang of truck drivers at the door waiting on me to come out. And I'm like, what the hell? And I didn't know they were waiting on me until I saw them pointing and talking. And luckily, it was another guy there with me that I knew because we had just dropped off at the same place. So he and I were both at the truck stop. And I grabbed him and I asked him, could you please pretend to be my guy? I said, because all those guys are at the door waiting and I don't know what's going on. He's like, cool. So I had to like grab on him to get out the station. And they're all staring, and I can say from that day on, I stopped wearing shorts. So if, if I wear anything because it's hot, they come down past my name. Wow. Well, D, hey, I, I appreciate you coming on, uh, sharing your experience, sharing your uh, sharing your life with me right quick. Uh, man, we so, so, so much that we haven't even scratched the uh, surface on, man. But uh, I I definitely will bring you back on. You know, we we will we will talk again, and all like that. I appreciate uh I appreciate that. Is there any uh is there any advice that uh is there any advice that you can give some of these uh female drivers that's coming out in the industry, it's especially your industry? Um, is there any advice that you can give uh for them? Man, don't 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 give up. Because like I said, in the chat groups that I'm in with these other females, the one major thing they all keep running into is harassment. A lot of it coming from the trainers. I mean, it, it's crazy. But the only thing I can say to them is don't give up. Don't don't let a guy who's not comfortable within his own skin push you out the door because he's scared to see you do what he can that's do. What's up. That doesn't make him less of a man. And that's what these guys are looking at. And I wish they would stop. It has nothing to do with your manhood. This sister is trying to feed her damn baby. Exactly. So stop blocking her. Exactly. That is what's up. That is D. I appreciate her coming on here, hollering at me. And if you guys want to come on and just chop it up with me, that's what I do. I conversate with you. You know, I don't not I'm I'm here to give you my platform, you know, sit back, relax, and listen. You know what I'm saying? And Miss D, she got she got more to say. So she will be back on in the uh in a future episode because you know we you know there's a lot there's a lot more stuff that I want to ask her and, and talk about. But uh as you know, brother man is working. So you gotta get his, you know, you gotta get up and get up <laughs> out of get up out of here. So if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, hit me up in the Gmail at lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up in the text, 216-600-2090. Or subscribe to me over at Instagram and hit me up in the DM. And as always, y'all can get at me in the comments. I mean, you know, I I, I do respond to comments. You know what I'm saying? I am your humble host, Lockout Men. This is Miss D. Miss D, I appreciate you coming on and, and, and chopping it up with me and my listeners. And I appreciate my listeners and, and my viewers for watching. Is there anything else, uh, is 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 there anything else you wanna you wanna say before we get up out of here? 
<laughs> no, not, that's about it. I look forward to talking to you again. I appreciate you reaching out. This was interesting. Ten as four, ten four. <laughs> All right, I appreciate you. And on that note, me and D, we are out of here.